Housed in the Louvre in Paris, the Mona Lisa by Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci is perhaps the most famous painting in the world. But did you know it was stolen in 1911? On August 21st, Italian museum worker Vincenzo Perugia perpetrated what has been described as the greatest art theft of the 20th century. Contrary to police theories, which suggested Perugia hid in the museum overnight, the Italian claimed he did nothing more than walk through a worker's entrance dressed in one of their uniforms, making him indistinguishable from the other workers at the museum. A plan so overt it was covert, Vincenzo simply took the painting off the wall, hid it under his smock and fled the museum the same way he came. Initially storing the Mona Lisa in his apartment in Paris for around two years, he eventually made his way with it to Florence, where he tried to give the painting to local art curator Mario Fratelli. Though claiming his crime was committed for nationalistic reasons, Fratelli was certain that Vincenzo was expecting more than just a pat on the back for his exploits. Private letters sent by Vincenzo to his father confirm this. With the Italian writing, I am making a vow for you to live long and enjoy the prize that your son is about to realize for you and for all our family. So whilst Vincenzo was expecting a large financial reward, Fratelli instead alerted local authorities as to what had happened. Whilst Perugia was hoping for some financial compensation, it doesn't rule out that he had some nationalistic sentiment fueling his mission. That's how the courts saw it at least. Vincenzo was tried for theft, but only spent seven months in jail despite the high-profile nature of the crime. The court softened by his apparent nationalistic motivations, with many in Italy hailing him as a great patriot. Others are not so convinced, however, with many arguing that if he was not fueled by money, he would have donated the painting for free, with returning it to his homeland being reward enough. After his release from jail, Perugia would go on to fight in the First World War, get married, raise a family, and work as a painter-decorator, of all things. He died at the age of 44 on October 8th, 1925. It was his birthday. As for the Mona Lisa, it returned to its rightful home in Paris, where it remains today. Or does it? A year after the theft, Saturday Evening Post journalist Carl Decker wrote that he met an alleged accomplice named Eduardo de Valfierno, who claimed to have masterminded the theft, with Vincenzo serving as just a pawn in a greater scheme. Valfierno allegedly employed forger Yves Chadron, who was to have created six copies of the painting to sell in the US, whilst concealing the location of the original. Does this mean, then, that the Mona Lisa we all know and love is in fact a fake? Whilst this seems even more extraordinary than Vincenzo working alone, that's because it probably is. There is very little evidence that Valfierno actually existed, or if he did, that he was involved in the theft of the Mona Lisa at all. Though the painting was always well known, the intrigue and drama surrounding the heist elevated its fame to a whole new level. When assessed for insurance, the painting was estimated to be worth $740 million, making it, in theory, the most valuable painting in the world. Funnily enough, however, they didn't purchase the insurance, putting the money instead towards better security. Thank you for joining us at Canned History. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, then like, comment and subscribe.